So before you started working or before you started working for yourself and you set up Mentivity, you actually were working in schools. So you also have an experience of being an educator of some sort as well. So what was that experience for you and why did you decide to then leave to then set up Mentivity specifically? Yeah, I mean, as I said, through football, that's how I got into coaching. And that's when I realised I could build rapport and actually have an impact on young people. So it was by way of that network um, that I got into working in schools. There was a job that came up as a youth inclusion coordinator at um, Elton College. And my old teacher from college said, look, I think you'd be really good for this. Like, can you come and do it? I was like, all right, cool. So I did it for about two months, two, three months. And they were just like, the school, like, you're fantastic. The kids really like align with you. You get on with them. You can control them. Like why are you not working in schools? And then they offered me a role as a, a teaching assistant, mm. which was totally different, less money, went in there. And you just don't get any respect. You don't get respect from teachers because they just think you're from the hood and you're mm-hmm. young and just like, yeah, they just like you because you're black. Like, no, they like me because they respect Behavior me. management. Yeah, and I, yeah, exactly that. But I just really, that year I did between 2006, 2007 at Elton College um, was really good, especially sports college, really liked it. But then the job at Sills, the people referring it came up, came up. And I just said, right, I'm going to go for this one. And that was a totally different kind of transition. But I was just passionate about young people because I became disillusioned with football because I, I played professional for a couple of years, then had a really bad injury, um, was supposed to go to Howard University, uh, Washington, D.C. on a scholarship. That didn't go through. Then I had a kidney disorder. I was just really struggling in mm-hmm. life. And I really thought, right, what am I going to do? And then I had my son. And that's what really motivated me to go into working in schools. because I wanted to create a better environment for him. And that was in 2006. So he was really the catalyst for me to actually take that leap and get into into um, education and really using sport, but also the general rapport to, to really help young people on their journey of life because I needed it in school. Mm. So just being a relatable person. So, yeah, that was really the catalyst and why I did it. And then from there, I just kept wanting more and kept wanting to do more and just wanted to be a disruptor in the space. Mm. So when I went to the pupil referring, it, it was just like I was still rough around the edges. Like I was... I was from Ells- Ellsbury Estate, so growing up I was a Peckham boy. Like I just didn't know how to be in a professional setting, mm. but the kids loved me, so mm. I didn't really care. In team meetings, I'd be calling that teachers like, you're incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they don't like your lessons and yeah, like all that stuff. That's how I've always been. So this is not like something I put on now. This is how I am. So, um, yeah, I was always like that, and I just got the respect from my peers and, and just progressed, and from there just went into a full-time coaching role for Southern Council, so... Yeah, that's how I got into education, man. Okay, okay. So after a period of time working for the council, yeah, um, I'm assuming somewhere within that time, you then decided actually, I want, I want to set up something for myself. So how did Mentivity actually start? What Gosh. was its story? So I've got to go way back now. So I was working for Southwark Community Games, which was a year-round sports project that was run by Southwark Council. I was one of ten um, head community sports coaches, and um, 2011 we were hit with uh, redundancy. So everyone got called into the office and everyone was like, all right, no job. And we're like, okay. So then that there was a first seed in terms of thinking, right, I've got to do my own thing. But prior to that, I was trying to get my UA for B and Southwark blocked me from doing that. And I decided to go to university at the age of 28, go back to education. So I enrolled to the University of East London to study um, youth and community work with sports development. So I did a combined degree. Uh, and that was my way of getting back at them. But I realised as a coach, I wouldn't really progress in the game as a black coach because mm. if established black men who are ex-pros can't get the jobs, how am I going to get a job? Mm. Right. So um, I went to university and that was a real challenge. And during that time, that's when I honed the whole philosophy of mentivity. And I was like, right, this is what I want to do. And actually it wasn't called mentivity, it was called sports <laughs> men. So sports mentoring, because I wanted to be specific to sports. So that's what I knew. Um, and then I just really started focusing on the other side of it and learning. And through my first kind of case study and my first mentee who was at the people referring it, that's what developed the whole concept for mentivity. So fast forward, I was working for Greenhouse uh, Charity as well. So Greenhouse Bethlehem Football Club. I did that for from 2006. They also made me redundant in 2015. I experienced a second secondary redundancy with Southwark as well. And that was in 2015. I just said, right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm not working for anybody ever again. I'm not letting anybody tell me that I don't have a job, that I don't have an income. I'm not letting anybody have that power over me. So I just said, right, I'm going to use my redundancy money, set up mentivity. If it fails, I get another job. Mm-hmm. Simple. Six years later, I'm here. You're looking uh, at it, man. Love that. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah man. that's good. You know what I like about that? It's always a reminder to me as well that like a lot of good things come from negative situations. One hundred percent. No matter what, like that's just that's just like that's almost like my um. Can I use, can I use the word mantra? But that's the thing that I believe in. Like yeah. I feel like when, when you suffer, when you go through an experience or trauma, um, that's often when like a desire is 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 kind of it's birthed. birthed. Yeah. You know, you, you find your purpose in mm. those moments and stuff. Um, and and and, and growth. And growth, mm. more importantly, yeah. And tragically, you know, you think about a lot of trusts and stuff. So you think about um, 